Good Wednesday to you. It's week five of our Lenten season. What a difference a few weeks makes this time of year. From mounds of snow to mounds of crocus blooms and jonquils. It always amazes me that these plants have the strength, the fortitude, to push up through the earth and the mulch to reach the sun. And once they do, there's no stopping those gorgeous blooms. And speaking of gorgeous, it's been wonderful to see some of your gorgeous smiling faces. At least I think you're smiling in worship as folks are receiving that second vaccine. It seems that one of the places we head to in celebration is worship. And it's good to see you in the sanctuary. We thirst for the opportunity to worship together, to be together. We are the body of Christ and we're not meant to be quarantined and kept apart. We can do it if we have to and we'll keep doing it as long as we have to, um, as we've proven over these past many months. But like those early spring flowers, give us just a slight hint that the world is ready for us and we are out the door and ready to bloom. So after the year we've had, um, we know what it means to thirst, to thirst for more, for the warmth of a hug, for the uncovered smile, for the sound of a choir. We know that Jesus is with us in that thirst as we turn to our reflection on the seven last words of Jesus. In fact, the words we hear from him on the cross today are very simple. All he says, according to John, is, I thirst. And this could be Jesus reminding us of his humanity, that just as any would in his circumstance, his body craves water. He's dehydrated. He's physically craving to be replenished. And being without water isn't normal. We need it for our bodies to function. Dehydration could easily be the cause of death for those who were executed on the cross. Of course, we've learned that the author of John's Gospel doesn't write with only one meaning in mind. Jesus' words might go beyond his expression of a physical need, a, a physical thirst. This could be the expression of an emptiness, that Jesus has given all of himself at this point, poured out all that he had to give for us. And now he's experiencing that emptiness, that thirst. Or it could be that Jesus is at the point where he is so looking forward to his reconciliation with the Father, that he thirsts for this time of pain to end and he thirsts for the, the time of resurrection to begin. There also are thoughts to ponder um, in this scripture, other thoughts. We read that Jesus was offered a drink prior to this. There are questions as to what he was offered. Was it gall or myrrh or sour wine? And if he refused it, then why? Why would he refuse a drink at that point? What, what's the symbolism in being thirsty? As we think about the use of water to portray the, the flow of God's love, God's kingdom, God's spirit throughout scripture, water in the river of life as described in Ezekiel, as it flowed from the temple and out into all the world, or the, the drink of water given to Jesus by the Samaritan woman at the well or the water which was used by Jesus to wash the feet of his disciples, or perhaps even the waters of baptism. There are so many ways to explore these two words. So I invite you to find your Bible and to dive in. Find a good concordance or commentary. There's several online. Maybe as we come to know the meaning of, the word, of these words as interpreted by theologians over the centuries, 
You might also consider what they mean to you. What does it mean to you that Jesus expressed a need in a time of suffering? What need might you find yourself needing to express during this time? What needs do you hear in the voices of others on this day? How might you be an instrument of healing, providing relief for Jesus' thirst through our love for others? I invite you to ponder these questions as we reflect on this prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Hear these words. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.